So, hello everyone. This is just uh, a quick video tutorial on how to use uh, the steam tables uh, in your notes that you're going to need to solve um, some of the problems you've been set and some of the problems that are going to come up in your exam and also how to use uh, the Molly chart which uh, we looked at and it's in the back of your chapter 6 notes. Um, so we covered these things in class in our last lecture but um, I think it's it, it's pretty hard to teach how to use uh, steam tables uh, and a Molly HR on, on, on the blackboard so I'm going to use this this format, the video tutorial format, to go through it in a bit more detail um, and have with any problems you might have. I've um, had a few of you come up to me after the lecture and I've had a few emails since, so I know a couple of you are having, having, having issues. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through one of the problems in this problem sheet that I've sent you, um, problems on two-phase fluids and vapour power cycles. We're going to look at the very last problem, 0.10. Example 0.10 in your, on your question sheet asks you to consider a, a steam power plant that is operating on an ideal Rankine cycle, like the one I've drawn here. Um, and it tells us that steam is entering the turbine at 70 bar and at 500 degrees C. So point 3 on the Rankine cycle here is the point where the fluid, the steam, enters the turbine. So at this point, the pressure is 70 bar and the temperature is 500 degrees C. Uh, and it tells us that the fluid is cooled at a pressure of 0 0.1 bar. So we know down here at point 4, where the steam exits the turbine, uh, the pressure is 0 0.1 bar. And one of the things we have to do in this question is calculate the thermal efficiency of the plant. So, in general, to do that, we need to work out the enthalpy at each of the four stages in the Rankine cycle. So, in this tutorial, I'm just going to talk about um, this bit, stage three to stage four, the expansion in the turbine. Um, and we're going to calculate the enthalpy. Um, at these two points, point 0.3 and point 0.4, and we're going to do it using the steam tables first, and then we're going to do it using the Molly A chart and see what the difference is. Okay, so the one thing we know about the fluid here when it's entering the steam turbine is that it is in the superheated vapor region. Okay. And in um, this normal ideal Rankine cycle, we've got the saturation curve here, the dotted line. So we know that point 0.3 is in the superheated region. So we need to use the superheated tables. So in the back of your notes, the chapter 6 notes, uh, power generation cycles, we've got a number of tables, superheated, superheated steam. And we are at 70 bar. So the left-hand column of each of these tables is pressure, and in brackets are uh, the saturation temperature of that pressure. Uh, that's the temperature at which boiling occurs at that pressure. Um, so we need to find 70 bar, which is right at the bottom row down here. So I'll just highlight that. And then all these data here along the bottom row in this column are all relating to superheated steam that is at 70 bar. Um, the next thing we need to know is the temperature. That is the top on the top column here, the top row of the table. And the temperature we're told is 500. So I'll just highlight that here. So coming down to the, the bottom, the data that relate to our, our state on entry to the turbine are these, these ones here. 500 degrees C at, oh, yeah, there we go. 500 degrees C and 70 bar. Okay. So, 
we need to know the enthalpy at state 3, we can just read it off the table. So the enthalpy is 3410 kilojoules per kilogram. So if I just bring in our document again here, we can just write that on. Now, because we're going to use the tables to ca to to, uh, to calculate the the enthalpy at point four as well, um, we also want to read off here what is the entropy. I'm going to explain why we're doing that in a second. So the entropy at this point here we can read off as six point seven nine six kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So again, I'll write that down. Okay, so the reason we noted down the entropy there is because um, we know that in an ideal Rankine cycle, the compression in the pump and the expansion in the turbine are both isentropic processes. This means the entropy does not change during the expansion in the turbine. So the entropy at this point, point 0.4, the exit of the turbine is going to be the same as the entropy at the entrance to the turbine. 6.79 blah 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 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so what we need to do now is try and find 0.4 in the tables. Um, so generally, um, in the ideal Rankine cycle, 0.4, the exit of the turbine, will be just inside the saturated region of the uh, TS diagram. And therefore, we're going to need to look at the saturated water or steam tables, which are a different set of tables to the superheated tables that we're looking at here. So, blah, blah, blah. yeah, page 25 of the chapter 6 notes, we have the saturated water table from Rogers and Mayhew with pressure in the left hand column and the one thing we're told is that um, the pressure on the exit of the turbine is 0.1 bar so we know we need data somewhere in this row the 0.1 bar right and we're interested in the entropy data which are just at the end of the row here. So when we're in the saturated vapour region, um, what we're interested in, there'll be a mixture. Some of the fluid will be in vapour phase and some of the fluid will be in liquid phase. What we're interested in is the average entropy um, because the, the average entropy of the fluid uh, the mixture of the fluid in the two phases is going to be the same as it was entering the turbine, 6.79. So we need to calculate, therefore, the dryness fraction. What is the mixture? You know, what percentage are we water? What percentage are we steam? Um, now, from your notes, your chapter five notes, um, there's a useful little equation, which is x dryness fraction equals S average, our average entropy, minus our SF, our entropy in the liquid stage, divided by SFG. Okay. Now, we know um, the average entropy is the same as going in to the turbine, S3, 6.79. And we can read SF and SFG off the table. And those values are 0 0.65 and 7.5 approximately. And that tells us 
that our dryness fraction is about 0.8 or 80 percent. It's actually, if you calculate it properly, it's 0.82. So, having calculated our dryness fraction from the entropy data, um, we can then use that dryness fraction to work out the average enthalpy uh, at um, 0.4. So the enthalpy data is next to the entropy data on the same row of the table. We can highlight it here and we can read off um, the value of enthalpy in the liquid phase uh, it's 192 uh, kilojoules per kilogram and in the vapor phase is 2584 uh, kilojoules per kilogram uh, and we're going to use these data to calculate the average enth along with the uh, dryness fraction we just uh, calculated to calculate the average enthalpy of 0.4 so again using Another helpful equation from chapter 5 of your notes, the average entropy, en enthalpy, sorry, <laughs> uh, is HF plus the dryness fraction X times HFG. Again, we, so we've calculated X and we can read HF and HFG off the tables and then we calculate our value of enthalpy at state 4 which is 2154 kilojoules per kilogram. So we've got our enthalpy at state 3, 3410 and our enthalpy at state 4, 2154 and that's what we need to calculate. So that's how we did it using the tables. Uh, it took a little bit of time, um, and we had to we had to go through a few equations to deal with the fact that with the dryness fraction problem, the fact that we were in the saturated um, region and we were a mixture of liquid and vapor, and we needed to we needed to carry that through in our calculations. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing now again, but using the Molly HR, and hopefully you're going to see. It's a little bit quicker. So, on the very back page of your notes, um, page uh, 34, the notes for chapter 6 again, you've got a Molly H chart. Um, this is uh, an enthalpy entropy diagram for, or HS diagram for water, and it has um, plenty of lines plotted on it for pressure and temperature and this line here is the saturation line corresponding to this dotted line here on our TS diagram um, and within the saturation region we've also got lines um, telling us the dryness fraction 95% uh, 90% and so on so it's, la it's labelled quality on uh, on this plot, but as we know from the lectures, it's the, it's the same thing. Um, so again, we're, we're just going to we're just going to literally go through this th that bit of the problem again, calculating the en enthalpy, uh, at the entrance to the turbine point three and the exit of the turbine point four. Now and starting with the same information, so we have. Uh, we have, we're told that the pressure is 70 bar and the temperature is 500 degrees C. So on the Molly HR, we have our 500 degrees C line here. Um, we also have um, pressure lines coming down like this. Um, now on this chart, the pressure is in megapascals, so we need to do a conversion. So 70 bar is 7 megapascals. So 0.3 on our Rankine cycle, the entrance to the turbine, we can mark that on our Molly chart by finding where the line for 500 degrees C 
crosses the line for 7 megapascals, and that is roughly... here. Okay? So we'll put a cross there, and we'll label it 3. Okay? Um, now, we can read off from point 3 on the y-axis the value of the enthalpy. So we'll just draw, draw a line here, and we've got a point crossing here around 3,400 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, if you look at the value we calculated from the tables, 3,410, that's pretty good, okay? So we've got roughly the same value of the Molière chart. And in the same way, we can read down to get the entropy. So there we're crossing the x-axis at around uh, somewhere between 6 and 7, so about 6.8. And if we look at the value we read from the tables, 6.79, we're pretty much in the right place as well. Okay. Um, so again, we know that expansion through the turbine is isentropic. Um, entropy is the x-axis on this plot. So we know that the expansion, the movement from point 3 to 4, is going to be down this line. And we also know that at point 4, the pressure is 0 0.1 bar. Um, so we can find point 4 on the Molly HR by finding the point where 0 0.1 bar, which is 10 kilopascals, so this line here, where the 10 kilopascal line crosses our dotted line at an entropy of 6.8 that we drew. And that is... here. Okay? And I'll just draw that in solid. So this is um this is the expansion through the turbine, the process of expanding through the turbine drawn on our Molly HR. And that's point four. And if we go along and read off the enthalpy at point four we've got something around 2,200. And if we look at the value we calculated from the tables, 2,154, we're, you know, we're reasonably close. I mean, obviously, if you have a more, a more accurate Molly chart than this, you can get the, the value more accurately. Um, in terms of what you need to worry about in answering questions, uh, in your exams, etc., um, you'll only expected, be expected to provide the accuracy that you can possibly provide uh, using the chart you're using. So we've got 3,400 for enthalpy going into the turbine, 2,200 for enthalpy coming out of the turbine. Calculated very quickly off the Molière chart and calculated with a little bit more effort going through these equations for the dryness fraction using the tables. Um, um, you can't always use the chart. Um, for things like compression in the pump, you might find you end up using the tables because the, the data on the chart are not very detailed in the compressed, uh, compressed liquid region. Um, so just another couple, a couple of points to finish up to, to think about when using the tables. Another couple of things that might trip you up. Um, question uh, number 2. 0.2 in your problem sheet, you'll have to calculate some volumes, and some of the one of the, at least one of the volumes you're going to have to calculate is in the compressed liquid region. Um, now, the specific volume data in the saturated region and the superheated region of your charts are given in the tables, so but only in the vapor phase. So your saturated region, you've got, this is the table we looked at before, pressure, temperature, and then specific volume of the vapor phase. Not VF, not specific volume of the liquid phase. You want to calculate, um, if you want to find, sorry, the specific 
volume of the liquid phase, you have to go to the additional table on page 32 of your notes called Further Properties of Water and Steam. And this has listed, listed on the left, left side a number of temperatures uh, and a number of pressures um, and the corresponding VF, okay, the volume, the specific volume of water in the liquid phase. Uh, and just pay attention to this column because if you look here underneath, it tells you that the units are divided by 10 to the minus 2. So each of the values you read off this table, you can't just plug those into your equations, etc. You need to add an extra two decimal places. So at a temperature of 50 degrees C, uh, the specific volume of the liquid phase read off the table is 0 0.1012. Uh, but in order to get it in the right units, meters cubed per kilogram, we have to add another couple of zeros in there. So it will be 0 0.001. 0, 1, 2. So just bear that in mind and don't let that catch you out. Um, and I think that's about it. So uh, I hope you found that helpful and my video making skills not too amateurish. Um, but um, if you have any more problems or issues with using these tables, uh, please feel free to come up to me in class in the break or send me an email. Um, and I'll try and help you out, and if a lot of you are having problems, I'll try and cover it in class or make another, make another video like this one. Okay, thanks very much.